Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my Baldur's Gate Let's Play with me, Spaceface. Um, picking up from where we left off, um, we're in this area of the Cloakwood, so we've got this area and maybe one more. I can't remember if it's one more or two more. Um, but we've got a few, uh, a couple of areas to do to finish out this um, this bit of story. Looks like quite a big map, so uh, we'll get cracking. Now, um, I had mentioned... Uh, so first of all, first thing I need to do is apologise for the last, it's either the last one episode or two episodes, um, missing the game audio, um, unfortunately. I didn't have a save far enough back to go back and, uh, and re-record those episodes, so I've just put, uh, put some music in place in the background, so sorry about that, um, bit of a, a screw up on my part, but the, um, at least we have uh, the commentary is still there, um, so it's just game audio. So we're missing spell sound effects, um, sword swings, all that kind of stuff. So obviously a bit um, a bit depressing, but nothing that we can't live without. And uh, it is now resolved, uh, so it shouldn't be happening in any episodes going forwards. Um, second thing that I wanted to talk about is I was discussing um, taking a level of warrior for Imowin um, in order to be able to use that longbow plus two. Um, but of course what I forgot is that that's not really possible. Um, I could dual class Imowin, um, but in order to be a fighter thief really you want to start with a fighter, like you can't just splash one level as a human, when you dual class, you um, she would she would basically reset to level one as a fighter um, and lose access to her thief abilities, uh, and she would not gain those back until she um, caught up in levels. So, yeah, not a really good solution. Um, and also canon wise, uh, looking to go into into Baldur's Gate two, she dual classes into a mage. So, not. Not ideal. Um, so that leaves us with a bit of a tricky prospect. Um, we we can't have Viconia or Jahira use the bow. The only people who could use the bow is Minsk or um, Khalid, who are our frontline fighters. So we will probably end up just not using that bow. Which is a bit of a shame because it's um, really nice. I'm just going to check for traps here. This looks like a prime location for traps, but I guess not. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're probably just not going to end up using that bow, which is a bit of a shame. And, and also it means that we are going to have to be in the market for a new ranged weapon for Imoen. Um, now, I did have a look through what, um, what weapons are available, um, and it seems like, perhaps our best bet. Combat's got all fucked up here. There we go. It seems like uh, we've got a few options. Um, uh, and our best bet is probably um, the crossbow. Uh, light crossbow of speed. <coughs> which gives us extra attacks. Um, and is available for sale at the Thunderhammer Smithy. So, we will, um, after Cloakwood, we'll probably head back there and pick that up. But it does also mean that all these arrows that we've been hoarding are going to be pretty useless. Because um, we won't have an actual archer. Unless we change either Minsk or Khalid over to use the bow. Um, so, actually, what I might do now, Minsk is pretty pretty tough as our frontline fighter. Um, so, screw it. For the moment, I'm going to chuck this bow onto Khalid, just to see how we get on. Um, and if it turns out decent, then, you know, it's decent. Um, bows are really, really good. Um, 
the fact that arrows um, they f it, they fire quickly. You get lots of uh, attacks per round, um, and uh, it interrupts spellcasters. Uh, and also, it means that you don't actually have to trudge all the way into combat. Um, you can start attacking as soon as something appears on your screen. So, um, especially in Baldur's Gate uh, one, a party of mostly archers or entirely archers is very strong. Um, you know, the same way that kobolds wreck you from across the screen because they get loads of attacks. Uh, you can do exactly the same thing to uh, to the kobolds. So. Uh, let's move me out of combat. So you do get penalised, if I remember rightly, for um, ranged attacking in close combat, so we'll have to keep an eye on that and switch it back. And maybe this is just what we'll do. Um, we'll swap him in and out of, um, of ranged as the situation demands. It's probably a, a better idea. If there's lots of um, lots of sort of brutey creatures that need face tanking, then he can switch back into melee. Uh, and if it's um, you know a single spellcaster, we'll keep him as a, a ranged attacker. Heath Spider. But we do also kind of need to do something about the druids, um, or the clerics rather. Because, well, they're getting tankier, I guess. Like, it's it's not such a problem as it was, um, having them in, uh, in close combat. Like, they did not take a hit from that Wraith Spider, so maybe it's not so bad. <coughs> But we do want to, to keep them in mind and keep upping their armor class. Um, like the issue I always have with um, with spellcasters in uh, in melee range is just that it's so easy to interrupt their spells. Um, if you have a cleric standing in melee range who starts casting um, cure major wounds or something, cure medium wounds, and they take an attack. Then you you lose your spell, you know. Um, so it's a it's a double negative of you don't get the healing and you burn the spell. But with that said, they can't um, they can't use ranged weapons. Um, well, they can't because uh, that was one of the things I was considering doing was um, giving either Jahira or Lyconia the um, plus two longbow, but neither of them can use it. Uh, they are slings only, I believe, which is uh, pretty shitty in terms of uh, in terms of adding ranged um, support to our casters. Now, from memory, this is a wyvern cave, so. Let's yes, or, um, just walk in and see how it goes. Task. Hey, here's the Wyvern Cave. Right. Let's take out the big ones first, I think. We're going to drop a Glitter Dust. And we're also immediately going to bless the party. And we're going to chant as well. So, good old Minsk, we believe in you. Um, I think we might need to send Khalid in there as a melee. To tie up some of these guys. Uh, that's a baby wyvern. Yeah, so let's all attack the wyvern. Um, these two can go in on the baby wyvern, and we're gonna start burning some spells. Oh, actually, wonder if our wand of paralyzation works. Now Minsk is taking an absolute kicking. So let's um, cure light wounds and also slow poison on him. 
Not enough. He's going down. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I will try before I reload is um, just dropping asleep. I don't think this will work, but I want to see what my saving. Yeah, no effect. So we will reload um, and re-enter. And this time we're going to switch Khalid straight into melee before we even go in. Uh, and him and we're going to switch over to plus one arrows. Because we just really want to drop the two big wyverns as fast as possible. Um, bless. Chant. Um, glitter dust again. And we want to take out this wyvern as fast as possible. You have need of me? Okay, and now we're going to basically stand behind Minsk healing him. So just immediately start dropping healing spells. And now everybody gets onto the other Wyvern. And uh, Jahira somehow has managed to get into fucking tanking the Wyvern, so we'll try and run her away and immediately kill Poison. Of course it didn't work. See, it's really irritating. Because poison interrupts your spells. Come on, just drink the... Okay, now run away. Okay, that's looking better. So we got rid of the two big wyverns. Lots of XP. Jahira just about survived. We'll heal her as well while we're at it. Uh, and now let's nuke down these baby weapons. Oh, God's sake. They keep managing to take out the weakest person every single time. So let's quickly try and get that onto her while these guys deal with the baby wyvern hey we made it what a beautiful illustration of a dead wyvern there okay so that actually did not go that badly the second time around. Uh, and what do we get? We get gems and a wand, and we don't need the plate mail. And then these are just wyvern heads, right? Yeah, just wyvern heads. So let's quick save there. Um, and what's going on with this? Why is that not... Oh my god. Okay, we'll come back to that. So, um, we're definitely going to want to rest, uh, and I think resting in this cave can trigger wyverns. So let's find out. Yeah, so big wyvern. Now, there's pros and cons to this. Um, cons, obviously, you can end up dying. Um, pros is you can end up with quite a lot of um, XP. 1400 each. Although the sirens with the sleep spell are way easier to take out. There we are. Successful rest. Um, so yeah, like there's, there's strong positives and negatives to, uh, to resting here, but the positive is almost always loads of free XP. Oh, and while we were doing that, <coughs> we leveled up. Ah, now we get an extra proficiency point. So this is where we can get high master, plus three to hit, plus four to damage, minus one speed factor, and an extra half an attack around. Um, 
so we'll just carry on maxing out longsword. There's no reason not to. Um, we could have taken uh, longbow as our other option, but we're never going to get to four points in longbow now on Khalid. So we might as well focus him on uh, longswords. And now let's have a look. So dual wielding longswords does not affect his main hand to hit. Uh, doesn't. Oh, it does affect his AC, so he loses 2 AC. Um, but how many attacks does he end up getting? Plus 4 bonus proficiencies. It doesn't actually say the number of attacks. Um, I'm pretty sure him dual wielding is preferable to um, sword and shield. So we'll try him out with it anyway, uh, and see how it how it goes. Um, if there are any problems, we can just switch him back, nice and easy. Um, I've been talking about doing it for ages, but Minsk, we still we want him to to dual wield. Oh, he does have the he's got the other Warhammer plus one equipped. Um, so what is he? Ten to nineteen damage with eleven to hit. This would raise his offhand to hit quite a bit. But, how are his proficiencies on Warhammer? Uh, it's only plus one on Warhammer. Oh wait, no, that's... It doesn't actually say his proficiencies. Proficiencies plus two. No proficiencies. Oh, so, okay, so he's just... Um, he's just on base. Or one, rather. So eight to eleven, eight to eleven, eight to thirty. 13, yeah, I do think him dual wielding is better than him using the sword, so he gets 11 to hit and 10 to 19 damage, and there he's slightly higher to hit, but more attacks, more damage, so we'll try them both as dual wielding fighters as we yes. progress. Of course. <laughs> yeah. um, now how are we in terms of, this map is almost complete, there's just this area left to cover, so let's um, let's head there. And then we can cross this map off of our list and proceed to the mines of Cloakwood, um, which was the area we uncovered uh, when we hit the edge a minute ago. Um, and the mines is the last area in Cloakwood, so... We're almost there in terms of main story. Let's cross this narrow stone bridge. Just some baby wyverns. Get our dual wielders in place. Yeah, that does seem better. It seems like we get a lot more attacks. So, we're not hitting as often, but I feel like the extra attacks are making up for it. And this is purely a perception thing on my part, rather than a mathematical thing. Um, I haven't... I obviously haven't sat down and worked out which is better. I'm just going on... on feel. Hey, there we go. Uh, and we're still doing plenty. Look, critical hit takes 22 damage from Minsk and 10 from Khalid. So, they're still hitting pretty hard. Um, and when we do get Minsk onto... Like, we will eventually swap him over onto, onto Hammers um, entirely. So his proficiency points from now on will go into Warhammers. Um, his proficiency points as he gets them, I don't think he gets very many. I don't think um, anybody except fighters can go above two in Baldur's Gate. Um, but whenever he does eventually get his next proficiency point, it'll go in Warhammers, and uh, we will give him that plus two Warhammer, and he'll have the plus. Actually, I don't even know if it'll be better. It'll probably be, still be better to keep the the short sword, the plus two short sword, in his offhand rather than going um, rather than uh, than having a plus two warhammer and a plus one warhammer. 
we shall see. Um, the, the main driver behind that is still getting strength braces onto Viconia. Because her strength is absolutely pitiful. So once she can use something that is not uh, strength 8. Oh, you know what? Actually, we might be able to give her that plus one club that Jahira is um, hanging on to. That's the plus one, isn't it? Let's see if she can use it. She definitely can't use that, so let's see. She can use the club. Was it to hit armor classes? Jesus, that's bad. It's a pretty big difference, but she's not one of our melee sources of damage anyway. Let's see what a difference this would make. So he's currently 13, so he'd gain damage and lose to hit. Yeah, it seems like that's probably for the best. Probably for the best. Um, and Viconia can use one of these? Yeah, she can. Okay. So she has enough strength to use the Warhammer, so that's good. So she doesn't need to carry around that crappy club. So we'll sell that. Um, flail. It's Flail Morningstar proficiency. I don't think she's got proficiency in that. So, yeah, maybe we do end up selling that. Um, doesn't seem like there's much in the way of good options for her. But this is how we'll proceed for now. <coughs> so let's head on forwards and we'll probably overrun in this episode. Um, we'll see. I'd quite like to keep this in one episode if we can, but... You have been waylaid by enemies and must defend yourself. Uh-oh. A simple task. Send these guys over You're here. Clear, Your point. I My blade will cut you down to size. What you want? I've done no. Let's try and kite this one around. Progress. While um while the other guys batter yep. that one. I've done had enough. There we go. Everyone attack. And we will um, probably end up resting in a second uh, once we get to the mines. Hey, nice. How are we for XP? Not far, not far off. So keep travelling towards the mines. Um, um, like I say, once we get here, yes. we're going to quickly save and rest. Splendid. What, now I so, the Cloakwood area, Gone. there's not much to it apart from the mines. I don't think... Um, oh, sorry, the mines area, I should say, because all of this is the Cloakwood. So, let's just see whether I'm right or whether I'm talking out my ass as usual. Let's head up this way and reveal the map. Yeah, so the edge of the map is here. We'll hit the edges just to uh, to get travel points. I don't think there really are any. No. A simple task. What are these? These are just regular wolves. So they're gonna drop pretty quick. And yeah, I do think we're probably gonna end up. Might as well finish finish that stack of eight. We're not that worried about it. Um, we're going to end up swapping him in um, from uh, bow to crossbow, from short bow to crossbow. Lakada, stop and state your names. Uh, you don't need to know our names. Uh, he's of the Iron Throne. Get him. Okay. Hopefully, seeing as these are peoples. We can uh, what, now I wonder. We can sleep them. Yeah, down they go. Yes. 
so definitely preferring the lots of attacks that come from dual wielding. Um, I know I said this was um, mostly a matter of feeling, but it definitely feels better. Um, Minsk and Kalid are both just kind of wailing away, tearing through bad guys. It might cause problems um, if we fight things with higher AC. So we might have issues hitting um, because our, our, our to hit rolls are quite high. They're like 13 and 15. <laughs> and I don't really know how the to hit maths works in 2nd edition, but I know it's all based off of um, to hit armor class 0. So, if you need like 13 to hit an armor class 0, if the enemy has armor class 0, you need to roll a 13 on the d20 to hit them. Um, of course, when you don't know exactly what everything's AC is, um, and you can't see the dice rolls anyway, uh, then it doesn't really matter. Huh, you're a queer fellow. So I'm pretty sure there's probably traps around here, so let's put her in detect traps mode. Uh, and go ahead and whack invisibility on her. Like, this definitely seems like the sort of place where there would be traps. So, we can scout ahead in invisibility anyway. Doesn't seem like there's any traps on the bridge. Two guards there. Uh, <coughs> I remember this fight. This fight's always been a pain in the ass Because of the two wizards, so we're going to have to try and use our uh, silence effectively if we can. Um, meantime, let's just take out the two guards. So, it might actually be worth... Um, I'm going to try something here, so I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to cast Silence preemptively. Night Singer, give me power. So if we cast Silence there. <coughs> always kill the mouthy one, that's what I always say. Okay, we got the spell off. May darkness prevail. Uh, okay, so it looks like we silenced a couple of people. And we're also going to chuck a sleep spell down there. And what the hell, we'll throw glitter dust as well. So it looks like sleep has worked on at least one of the mages, which is good. Come on, guys. This is dumb. There we go. Right, now take out the mage. And there's the other mage. Now we want to take him out pretty quickly as well. So while he's casting that, let's see if we can get a... No, we didn't get the magic missile off in time. But we can take him down now. Yeah. So, this fight's going a lot easier than it usually does. Um, I guess adding to the... Uh, we're massively over-leveled. Argument. So you can see... Um, we are just not hitting as often. These four guys are just swinging and swinging at this guy and not hitting him. Now, if we switch Minsk to... Two-handed sword. Let's see. That is not hitting that often anyway. Doesn't seem to be making that much difference. So let's swing it back to hammers. Woof. There we go. Alright, now what goodies have we got here? Um, a robe. And fire shield. I think this guy has some nice boots, doesn't he? Yeah. 
and a mace and a letter and some gold. And a potion, in fact. Let's let's grab everything, even though we never use potions. Um, but the boots, I seem to remember being... Yeah, doubles movement, right? So those are very nice to put onto. So we've got a couple of options here. We could either slap them on someone like Imowen, who's going to scout around the maps, or we could put them on a frontline fighter to get into uh, into range quicker. Um, I think we're going to put them on Imowen. Just to aid us in scouting around. Uh, I don't know why I picked that up. don't need that. Uh, plus one morning star. No one can really use that, so we'll end up selling it. Traveler's robe. We've as is better. But I'll hang on to that for the moment. You have, I can, I can, what else have we got? Uh, oh, full plate. Uh, looks like that's going to be a full plate plus one. Yeah, Valorian's plate plus one. So full plate plus one. Very nice. I think that would actually be an armor class upgrade from... No, no, so he would lose AC, but it should be an upgrade for Khalid. Is it not full plate? Maybe it's half plate. AC 2, minus 1 versus slashing. AC 1, minus 3, okay. That's a bit of a shame, but we can get your hero down to AC 0, which is something at least. So, one, two, four, another robe and some gold. Did I loot this one? I'm pretty sure I did. I must have done right. Uh, weren't there four of them? One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, that looks like a crappy robe. Gold resistance. So I don't think any... I think I'm wearing the best robe in the game. Um for my alignment. So, seeing as we've just given Imo in speed boots, let's give her invisibility and make use of those to scout ahead. So there we go, look at that, that's better. Now we're not going to be very good at picking up traps, but we can still trigger them. <laughs> trigger and uh, the old trigger and disarm. So it doesn't look like there are any traps. Um, so we'll bring the rest of the party up. While uh, Imoen just observes from the shadows. Poor dude. Down you go. I don't know what's happening with the um, the combat and the, or the pathing. It just seems to be repeatedly getting stuck. I don't know why. But the guard is down. Oh, we need to read the uh, the letter, don't we? So let's read the letter. We have need of your services yet again, Drassus. We're experience we are expecting an incursion at our mine location in the Cloakwood. You are to accompany Devon on to the site to prevent entry or assault anyone foolish enough to challenge you. Your standard fee shall be doubled in this instance. If it goes well, you should look forward to more of the same. So it didn't go well. Right. So we're gonna save here. Um, and we will end the episode there, um, and the next episode will be us clearing out basically the whole of the mines. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.